Hey guys, what's up? My name is Thomas Spark and welcome back to another video. Now, if you guys are familiar with the channel and my tier list, you've seen that I don't really like Surfshark. I don't really like how it uses fake timers to try to get people to buy the product. I don't really like how it uses three-year deals to try to get people to buy the product. They advertise itself as the cheapest VPN when it's not. Not a huge fan of the product itself. I find the application design clunky. I find the reputation of the, question, the company in hand also kind of questionable because I don't know anything about them and they just kind of sprung up and started topping sites out of nowhere. But all those things aside, I've also found some really funny things that Surfshark is doing now. So I first came wind of this story from WeVPN telling me about it. Basically what's happened is that WeVPN thinks that Surfshark has an add-on called Hacklock. They basically charge you like two bucks a month for this add-on and basically what it does is, well, according to WeVPN, they think it just queries, have I been pwned, pulls the information and serves it up on Surfshark. Now there's no attribution whatsoever when you go on Surfshark, I'll even show you what it looks like. So basically you're gonna input your email here, it's gonna query, have I been pwned, and it's just gonna copy all the information right here. If you look at this account right here with this um, stuff that got leaked, um, and you look at it right here, eight tracks, Town of Salem, Blank Media Games, Blank Media Games, Canva, Canva, you could see it's the same exact results. However, if you're looking at this list right here, there is no attribution whatsoever. So WeVPN asked Troy Hunt, the creator of this website, do you know that this is going on? Do you know a VPN service is pretty much charging customers to use your free service? Now this gets even more interesting when considering that Troy Hunt has kind of partnered with NordVPN um, as a sort of advisor for the company which is kind of weird because a lot of people find similarities between Surfshark and NordVPN. They both kind of advertise their deals the same way. They like using the same kind of timers. The websites kind of look similar and they're both kind of kind of anonymous in terms of who owns them in a lot of ways. WeVPN is asking Troy Hunt if they knew that uh, Surfshark was charging people, I guess in this case, $1 or it's like one to $2, so I think. Um, to access his data. Especially now that it's open source, it gets even kind of weirder. Um, WeVPN was suggesting that I interview Troy Hunt and talk about VPNs as well, and it's cool to see that Troy Hunt seems happy to. So hopefully in the future we can have Troy Hunt on the channel, which would be really cool. He's a pretty big figure in terms of privacy and stuff like that. I would like to ask him personally, you know, why he decided to be an advisor to NordVPN, which in a lot of ways is not the most reputable VPN company out there by any stretch of the imagination. If he decided to become an advisor for something like Molvad, iVPN, TorGuard, AirVPN, any one of those VPNs, I might be like, that kind of makes sense. But then again, those VPNs have such good reputations, maybe they don't really need an advisor. Who's to say? Anyways, Troy Hunt decided to look into this, that Surfshark could be using his um, kind of website, pulling the information and charging for it when they're not supposed to. He says, alrighty, I've looked into this and firstly, the only comments I've had from Surfshark is multiple spam emails, one of which resulted in this. Oh, I won't link to your spammy article. So I guess Surfshark has been spamming Troy Hunt and he wrote an article about spammy emails. Which is funny because NordVPN is also a company that's been uh, kind of in trouble for spammy emails um, in a similar fashion. I hop on a call to discuss this opportunity further. Typically, when there's three red flags here. A, when somebody misspells your name. B, when they say, hop on a call. Hop on a call is the type of, mar of language typically used by people who are... Uh, scam artists in my experience and the third is that this person's job title is influencer marketing specialist is that even a job um but again that's the side troy hunt looked up um surfshark hacklock and he found a video on youtube which is just like this affiliate i think talking about hacklock and you know what it can do um troy hunt says thirdly as far as i could tell there's no attribution to my website which is clearly spelled out in the license terms you must identify pwned as a source of data it's obviously created some confusion as the creator of that video literally says you might find similar tools online without, leasing, without realizing that Surfshark is using the API that um, Surfshark is using. So he's pretty much saying that people are talking about Hacklock, Surfshark's Hacklock, and not even realizing that it's just pulling data from his product and Surfshark is not properly attributing him or using the um, data in terms of how the license spells it out. Troy Hunt says, as for Surfshark charging money to bundle up a server I provide for free, that's shitty, but it doesn't violate the license terms. Right now, I'd just like to see them provide proper attribution if they'd like to continue using it. So I guess according to him, it doesn't violate the price, the license terms that they're charging people for it, but it perhaps does violate the license terms that they're not properly attributing it. 
Either way, it is shitty. Like he said, Surfshark charging people to access free data is not very privacy friendly at all. If you want people to know they've been hacked, why should you charge them to know that information? WeVPN goes on to say that he, they think that these kind of efforts and shady practices are not very good for consumers. If the story isn't worth telling, there's clearly preferential treatment and a lack of honesty when it comes to publishing VPN related news online. And I think that is true. Anyways, guys, I thought this was a pretty interesting video spelling out how Surfshark is charging people to get information they could get for free and not obeying the terms of license by not giving attribution to Troy Hunt. Hopefully in the future, he could come on the show and talk more about this perhaps or other things with related to privacy. And we'll see you guys again in the next video very soon.